we're going to have this session today. It's really about screencasting with QuickTime and Screencastify. So we're going to explore both those tools um, and you'll be in a position to choose the best one for you. Um, by the end of the, of the session, you will have the skills to create screencasts that you can use for student instruction, but also for student feedback. This Zoom is being recorded and it will be made available afterwards. Uh, so just so that you're aware of that, it also means that if there's something that you need to go back to and check out, you can. Uh, if you have a look at the chat down on the bottom there, you can have the chat next to the window that you're looking at. Uh, I've put a URL in the chat already, but as, you, as we're going through and you come up with questions, if you put them in the chat, I'll make sure that I address each of those questions after or during the session. So if you come up with a question, um, feel free to ask the question and remember that uh, possibly it'll get answered as we go along, but if not, we'll talk about it at the end. Just checking the chat on the side there, that's all good. So if you do have questions, by all means, click on the chat button uh, and then type your question in down the bottom there. I've sent you a link to a website that we're going to use today. Um, and that has some resources embedded again that you'll be able to have a look at and, and run through. And this is the website. So uh, we've been putting this together to give you a resource that you can go to. Now, I, I understand that it mentions feedback. It's feedback for online learning, but it's all about the video feedback in particular, whether we're creating a screencast for feedback or whether we're creating a, a screencast um, for instruction, it's pretty well exactly the same process. So I'm just going to click, click on the website there and our website's going to open up. Now, the, the thing that I wanna focus on um, if we are talking about feedback in particular is it, it's only going to be successful if students use it to improve their performance. So we've got to put it in a format that the students are willing to take on board uh, and they're actually willing to view and interact with. Now, I'll just click across and I'm going to click on the video feedback link. Um, and there's a couple of items that I wanted to touch on just before we get into actually creating um, our, our screencasts. Video can be, can be really powerful. Now, there is research, not just in feedback, but um, the teacher's presence in an online course is critically important um, in the student's engagement with that course. So the better able we are to have students seeing us and, and interacting with our instructions, the more engaged the students are going to be with that course. Now, for Mac screencasting, we've got two different options. One is QuickTime. It's already built into your computer and it's ready to go. Okay, it's, it's simple to use. The file sizes are quite big. Um, so it takes a while to upload and takes a while to download. So there are some limitations with that. The alternative is Screencastify. And Screencastify, it'll take you about two minutes to set up. So it's a little bit more work, um, but it has a webcam built in. So the students can see you in the bottom corner whilst you're doing um, your screencast. Uh, the mouse focus is really useful because it lets you direct attention to the area that you want students to be focusing on. It has small file sizes. It's saved automatically to your Google Drive and it directly integrates with Classroom and Gmail. So there's some serious advantages with that. But I'm going to show you QuickTime first, then I'll show you Screencastify and you'll, you'll get an understanding of how each of them work. I'm going to search for QuickTime. So command space on your Mac will bring up your spotlight search. And if I start to type QuickTime, it'll do the hard work and find it for me. I'm going to press return and QuickTime player has started up. You can see in the top right hand corner, um, QuickTime is highlighted. So when I click on file, I've got three different options here. A new movie recording will rec record me uh, using the webcam. A new audio recording will record the audio, what I'm speaking, and a new screen recording, which is what I'm going to click on, will record my screen. Ignore these three options for the moment. This will record my entire screen. And this option here will record a portion of the screen. So I'll, I'll just 
use that option. Always click on the options just to check that you're using the right microphone. Now, if it says external microphone, it's using this microphone that I've got plugged in and that's what I want. So when I click record, and it's now actually recording everything I'm doing. So where I'm moving my mouse around, if I was highlighting text, uh, it will actually be recording that. Now, over here, there's a little dot. And when I click on that dot, it stops my recording. And here is the little movie of what I've just recorded. A couple of seconds to start. Played it there, you could probably hear the audio in the background. Now, that's pretty straightforward. I've just created a screen recording. Now I'm just going to jump into my chat. I've got this QuickTime recording. If I go up to file, I've got some options as to how I might export it. Now, part of the problem is I'm going to save this recording. Okay. So now I've got a movie and when I open a new finder window, you can see sitting on my desktop here, will be my QuickTime demo movie. And that little movie of a quarter of my screen is eight megabytes. So it's kind of large uh, for a 17 second movie. It's going to take a bit of storage space. To make it smaller, I can go to file and then export as. And if I go to 480, which is the, the smallest option here. Okay, and I'll call that 480 so you can compare it. Save. It's now, just give it a moment to catch up. It's now saving my demo movie under my desktop as a smaller size. Okay. But I can drag it out and view it a bit bigger. And now my file size is down to 2.8. So we've gone from 8.6 to 2.8. That's a pretty big reduction. If I was going to send this out to students, I'd do something like that to make it a little bit smaller. Okay, I have one more question here uh, around what type of microphone I'm using. I'm just using a really old set of headphones, iPhone, I imagine, or an iPad. Uh, it's got that built-in microphone. They're actually a pretty good microphone. When we share the movie to classroom, do we need to consider the file size? Most definitely we need to consider the file size. And that's for me, one of the big advantages of Screencastify. File size matters no matter whether students are using their phone, no matter what they're using. And the reason for that is that either way, any way they're accessing it, um, they're downloading that data. We want things to be quick. We want them to be easy. We don't want students waiting two minutes for something to load. So what I'm going to do, um, I've, I've just shown you what I can do in QuickTime. Once I've got that QuickTime movie saved, I could email it to students. I could put it on classroom. I could do a whole range of things the way that we normally do. Um, but I'll quit QuickTime now because I'm going to show you Screencastify because it, it has a couple of advantages. So in Screencastify, uh, it, it's a little bit different. Um, and so I'm just going to go to uh, just a little essay here and I'm going to demonstrate ways that I might give feedback. Um, now I've got Screencastify set up. So if I click on Screencastify here, and I'll show you exactly how to do this in a moment, um, as in add the Screencastify extension. I click, you can see I'm limited to five minutes for, per video. I think that's a wonderful limitation uh, because there's very few occasions when you want to be creating instruction or feedback that's going to last longer than that in our current environment. Now I've got three, three different tabs here that I can choose from. I can record just the webcam. Uh, I can record my entire computer desktop or just the browser tab. And this time I'm just gonna record the browser tab. Um, always have a look at which microphone we're using. Again, I'm using the external microphone, okay, which is just the, the microphone that's on this headphone here. Um, and I can see the little green bar going up and down. That means that it's working. And I'm going to use my FaceTime camera to capture my face. There's some more options here. Don't worry too much about those options. I'm going to click record. So uh, I get the countdown one, two, three, and it's recording my screen at the moment. 
It's also recording my picture down in this bottom right hand corner. Um, so students are seeing me as I interact. And for this particular uh, piece of work, down, down the right here is my options for Screencastify. And this focus mouse is really useful because it grows away the screen so that you can see clearly where I'm moving the mouse uh, and, and what I'm actually talking about. So if I wanted to give some feedback on this section, I can highlight it and the student is seeing the exact section that I'm referring to as I'm talking about it. So a, a really useful tool is the highlight tool. Another tool that I can use uh, down here is the, the pencil tool and I can actually use that to highlight different sections. Now, whether I'm giving feedback or possibly if I had a set of instructions for students and I'm just running through those instructions, I can create a video explaining to them what I want them to do. Now, I can go through, if I get sick of uh, seeing my face in that little webcam, I can click here and turn the webcam off or turn it back on. And of course, every now and then, you run out of words to say, I can click on pause. Now this is pause my screen recording. Obviously the Zoom's still going. I can have a little drink. I can think about what it is that I want to say, and then I can click on play again and it starts recording. So it gives me that opportunity to, to have a break as I'm recording. Now I can stop my screen recording down here, or I can come back up to my extension in the top right hand corner. And if I click there, it tells me I've recorded for a minute 36 so far. Let's pause that. Now I could go back and start all over again. I could throw this out or I could stop my recording. And it's important that you see what happens when I stop the recording. So I'm going to click stop and it takes my recording uh, and up in this top right hand corner here, you can see it's recording it to drive and see how quickly it's, it's saving it to drive. So in, in those probably five seconds that I've been talking there, it's actually already saved this movie into my Google Drive. Now I can come up to the top here, and you can see the movies playing down the bottom there. I can come up to the top and um, change the title of the document. Uh, if I had a little bit of section at the front or the back that I actually didn't want to keep, what I can do is grab hold of these scissors and I can drag them to the section where I want the movie to start. Likewise, I can drag to the section where I want it to stop. So I can, I can do that simple editing. I'll just cancel that trim. So my movie is saved. It's already in my Google Drive. Uh, if, if you wanted to actually just make that available to the students quickly, I could just copy this link here. Okay, and I'll just jump back into chat so you can see and I could paste that link into the chat or into Google Classroom and be available for the students. Uh, I've got my movie, it's already saved into Google Drive, I could share it via the shareable link but if I click on send an email it's going to put that link into an email and I can send it directly to the student um, or I can share to Google Classroom. So I'll show you both these options because I think they're pretty important. So I've clicked on the, the Gmail link and it's just opened up a new Gmail window and I'll send it to myself. There we go. Click send. So the student would now have a recording or a link to the recording of that particular thing. Now if I send it to a whole class, so for feedback, I'd be sending it to an individual student most likely. But if I was sending it to a whole class, I'd probably be inclined to put it on classroom. And here I can click on share to classroom and you'll see that classroom opens up and it's going to load all of my classes. So I can scroll through and I can say, okay, I'm going to throw that into my year nine English class and I want to make it, I want to create an assignment. Or I want to make it an announcement or ask a question. So I've made this little recording. I can put it in there. Let's, uh, let's just make an announcement. So it's going to Year 9 English. Um, I'm making an announcement. I'll click go. So this is all within, just within my browser window. Um, and if I click post, that announcement's going to be posted to my Google Classroom.
really quite straightforward for me to create a quick screencast, instructional or feedback, put it in the classroom or email it out to students. Now, of course, I could throw it onto YouTube. I could download it if I wanted to do a bit more trickier editing. So you can see it, I'll click on view for classroom. My classroom will load. Okay, here's the announcement that I just made literally 30 seconds ago. And if I click here and I, I want you to see how this actually works, I'll click, my video is going to open. And when I click play, two, three, and it's recording my screen at the moment. So it plays straight away. So it's streaming this content as I need it. And it's a really small file size. So it, it just works really quickly. So it saves those bandwidth issues that we might have had if we used a different kind of tool. So 71 participants. Great to see so many people here. People here. Let's jump in the, in the chat. Okay, do I need to adjust permissions before sharing? No, it takes care of the permissions, depending on how you send it out. So if I send it out via email, it will take care of those permissions. If I send it to classroom, it will take care of those permissions. Uh, do students need to have Screencastify open? No. However, students can use Screencastify as well. So if you want them to demonstrate their understanding of some kind of topic, then you can get them to use Screencastify. Is there a time limit? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Elizabeth, yes, there is a time limit, uh, five minutes per video, but for us creating instructions, five minutes is a really good maximum time. Can we do something on the board and film it or do the words mirror and come out backwards? Have not tried that, so you would have to test it. Of course, you can flip the video, but that's another step. Can you edit within the video? So there's a, a premium version or a paid version that lets you have um, more editing capabilities. What I would do, um, I would just come across here and click download um, and download a version of it, throw it into iMovie or Final Cut Pro. However, we also need to get used to the idea that everything we do doesn't have to be perfect. So um, students, Students will get used to it. Students will appreciate seeing your face um, and they'll get used to it being much like it is in the classroom. Everything we do in the classroom isn't exactly perfect. Uh, with the paid version, yes, I imagine video links are unlimited. Um, again, I would prefer, I think pedagogically, you're probably gonna be in a much stronger place if you keep your videos to a relatively short period of time, maybe do multiple videos rather than one long video for the students. That looks like the question. So I'm just going to jump back into the website that I shared with you in the chat right back at the start. Um, and this website is very much under construction. However, uh, it, it's getting pretty close. So if you do need to know about how to give uh, text-based feedback, there's a tab there with some videos that will guide you through it. Um, how to do it in QuickTime, which I just demonstrated. There's a video there for that. I'm going to click on Screencastify because this little video here is a guide on how you can set up Screencastify on your Mac. Now, I'm going to demonstrate this for you now live, but I want you to know that that video is there so that you can go back to it um, and just check on a couple of little things. There's also a presentation here which will guide you through the process of setting it up. So the resources are all there. So if you get a little bit frustrated or you feel that I'm going too quick, by all means, let me know that I'm going too quick, but also know that you've got these other resources to back you up. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna become a different person. If only it was this easy in real life. I'm here and you can see that I don't have Screencastify. So what I'm going to do is just grab this URL and I'm going to jump back into my chat and I'll paste a URL into the chat. And this URL is the URL that we go to uh, to download the extension. So I'm gonna click on the URL now. Okay, and this website's going to open and there's a little button up here that says add to Chrome. Okay, add to Chrome is a good thing to do. So we'll click on that. Now it says, are you sure? Yes, we're gonna click on add extension. Okay, and you'll see at the moment it's checking. 
and it's been added. So that part was pretty easy. This is a three-step process, but that's the first step. So it's pretty straightforward. Our next step is I'm going to click on this little extension, which is now in my menu bar at the end of the URL bar. Um, and it's going to ask me to sign in with Chrome. Okay, it just makes sense for us to, to sign in with Google, I should say. It makes sense for us to do this because um, it's gonna save our stuff to Google Drive. Now I'm not using an education account here, so it might look a little bit different. Unfortunately, I only have the one um, DOW account. So this is a personal Google account, but I'll click on sign in with Google, sign in, sure. Okay, click allow, because if you don't, it's not gonna work. All right, and you can see that it's loaded up. Now, it has to have permission to use my microphone um, and camera, otherwise it's just not gonna work. Now, obviously we're gonna want these drawing and annotation tools as well. So we're gonna click on next. Okay, and it says, are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Okay, so it wants to use my microphone and camera as I've already mentioned. Click allow. Okay, and down here, I've got to say who I am. Uh, I'm definitely an educator. Uh, I'll say other. There we go. So it looks like we're set up and ready to go. Now, there, there might be one step that I didn't have to do here because I've already allowed Chrome permissions. But, but let's give it a try. I'm just going to do a demo. So I'm going to pretend... Um, I'm going, to sh I'm going to create a quick lesson on how to use Google. Okay, so what I will do is I'll come across here. I've got my Screencastify extension. I'm going to click on Screencastify. I'm going to tell it, as I mentioned before, I want it to record my browser tab. I've got a microphone that's working here. Do I want a webcam or do I not want a webcam? I do because I think the students are going to connect with the video better if there's a webcam and I'll tell it which one. There's only one option. Now I'm going to click record. So, welcome. In this little video, we're going to show you how to use Google. It's really quite simple. We go to google.com and then we type in whatever it is that we want to search for. Now, this is my personal account. They're the kind of things I've been searching for. So if I was looking for a dropper post, I would type that in and then I will get a whole series of different links. Thank you for watching my video. And I'll come up. And I've just created a video. Now, if you haven't done this video tour before, please, please do the tour. I'm going to skip the tour. It's already been uploaded to my Google Drive. I've got a shareable link I can put it in Classroom. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I can rename it at the top here. And because I was probably a little bit slow to cut off at the end, I could video. trim the end. So now my video is just that little bit shorter. That's about as easy or as hard as it needs to be to create a video. Can I ask for some questions or some feedback? Looks good. Excellent. Yeah, it is pretty good and it's pretty easy. I mean, I've, I've shown you how to do, I've done a lot of unnecessary talking. Uh, I've shown you how to use two different tools and we're only 28 minutes in. Hi, Mark. I, it, it was great that you did this because I was actually looking at doing something similar for the staff at St. John. So now I don't have to do it. So it saved me some time. Awesome. Thanks. Hey Mark, is there is there a limit on? Um, you said the videos have to be shorter than five minutes. Is there a limit on the f number you can do? You know. So um, a couple of years ago, there was a limit on. It was fifty per week, I believe. Ninety nine percent sure that that limit is gone. This tool, um, I've used it with Year Twelve mm -hmm. to um, actually do a an assessment task, and I found it. The kids found it very easy to use, and they actually video. We used it. The kids actually videoed footage for me and send it back as an, as their task. 
Yeah, great. So it's, it's definitely a great tool for kids to use as well. Um, I, I would encourage students to do it. And maybe, maybe you could just send them a recording of this uh, movie and that would probably be enough to get 99% of them on track. I just want to show you, so we've got 70 people in this uh, presentation, which is awesome. And you've all been so well behaved. So um, I just want to say your Zoom etiquette is excellent. I'm just going to show you one, one last thing. Um, sorry to disappoint people who thought they might turn up here for a full hour. I'm pretty confident we're not going to need a full hour. However, there's, there's one potential sticking point that I want to show you. So on this movie, so we're on, on the feedback website. And I've gone to video feedback and then screencastify for video feedback. If I come down here to this movie, I'm going to click play on the movie. Now, I imagine that you can probably hear a, a pretty poor quality audio version here. I'm just going to skip through. You don't need two versions of my voice at the same time. You are almost there. That's some permissions. Okay. On the screen, castified. So at the around about the 59 second mark, that's explaining what's going to happen if you haven't given permission for Chrome to use your microphone uh, and your webcam. If you look at this little bit, it's going to take you through this process. The microphone and camera. Click on the camera turned off button at the right hand end of the address bar. Click on the open preferences button, select camera, then tick the box next to Google Chrome. Okay. So I'm not sure if you could hear that, but basically there's a little thing that appears just here uh, and we click on it and it will open up your system preferences. Um, and it's going to go to your security and privacy. So it will take you automatically to this section. Okay. And then you'll need to click on camera and just put a tick next to Google Chrome. You'll need to click on microphone and you'll put a tick next to Google Chrome. Now, when I did my demonstration, uh, that didn't happen because I'd already done that in Chrome for a different account. So that's why it didn't work. I don't want to keep people for any longer than they need to stay here. By the same token, I'm more than happy to help people out uh, as they're working through this particular process. So what I propose now is that, um, Remember this website. By this afternoon, there will be a video, or probably by tomorrow, to be fair, there will be a video here on, on how to screencast in Screencastify. But given you've been to this session, you probably don't need it. You can probably just work it out. I, I really do believe the students are going to connect with video um, a, a little bit more effectively. Um, and more importantly, or just as importantly, definitely not more importantly, but just as importantly, you can save yourself a lot of time doing this. Okay, Grimston. I don't know who Grimston is. There's so many people in here that I don't know, but this is awesome. I love that someone, whilst I've been talking, has set this up and, and they're already using it. So um, thank you very much. Um, I'll just hang around in the VC if you do need help. But if not, uh, feel free to jump out and uh, we'll get these recordings up for each of the sessions as soon as we can.